Why, hello everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Middleton City. This is starting our awesome event called Unlucky Break, and the title tonight, Issue 5, There Will Be Plots. Joining me on this amazing romp today is three icons and a TGE. Hi, Teach. And then we've got Crimson. Wait, what you're saying? What you're what you're saying is I'm not I, I'm not iconic. They're all the icons, but I'm not. Well, neither am I. I said three, so there's there's clearly. No, we're just saying you're the only one who wants to make everyone suffer. Yeah, and then there's that. Well, if I take my camera off, then you all have to deal with the oversized OPT. So what's that's going to be also true. Uh, so so, so that, that was the voice of Crimson over there, Crimson Avix. I'm trying not to have my PC milked. Okay. That's. Darkfold, yes, we would rather rather have you here. Press F to pay respects. <laughs> there would be a lot of Fs. And then, of course, Nora Istra. Off to the side. Hello, Nora. Oh, right. Apparently, Nora has decided to use the mute function on the microphone, which is probably best for everybody. I mean, then there's that. He also had kid percent going on, I believe, so that's fine. We may have started without him, but that's okay. So, anyway. That's okay. His character never shows up until halfway through anyway. Well, that's kind of what's happening here anyway. So, hi, everybody. So, Middleton City. It's been quite the interesting month for our heroes here. Last time, we were at a park where we learned that, uh, well, Harrison has a dragon in his head. Um... Some really creepy thing. Uh, man is clearly has his eyes on Travis. And uh, hey, a cop showed up and tried to arrest Marble. And uh, Jin kind of is weird, but it's a uh, good kind of weird. It's good kind of weird. Chet, uh, well, you know, Chet has his luck demon, and uh, you get to learn a little bit more about Marble in the process. But uh, it's been a week. Has, in fact, been a week, so let's go around and see what we've been doing for the week. Uh, Harrison, I'll start with you. What has Harrison been doing for the past week? Just trying to survive. Nice. Well, I can tell you one thing he's been doing. Um, every so often, you've had the insatiable want to go to a library? Give uh, me a library that's going to let someone who looks like Harrison in. It ain't happening. Oh, well, it does happen because it's a public library. And you could ask Jam if he was here. They let anybody inside those. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> so anyway, um, you have done a little reading. Again, not because you wanted to, but, you know, you've done some reading. And surprisingly... You've actually learned a tiny, tiny little bit about that mark on your hand. What you have learned is basically that mark symbolizes um, remorse and repentedness, but you kind of think you already knew that. However, now it's been confirmed at least to you. So that is something you've got at the moment. And of course, you know you've got this dragon in your head, but you haven't heard her for really the past week. Outside of once in a very short while, she'll make a one or two worded comment. Normally along the lines of, good idea, you might want to rethink that, you know, different things. But otherwise, she's just kind of sitting back, just kind of, watching Travis what's Travis been up to for the week his schedule right how badly has the park changed his schedule so over the past like month Travis has probably spent more time either writing a new schedule or trying to reconcile whatever screwed up his schedule than he did actually following his schedule. <laughs> nice. All right. All right. 
but he's he's gone through like four different iterations trying to prepare on every like if uh, something happens and he screwed out of four hours out of his week how is he going to do it depending on what day of the week it happened and stuff like that so right <laughs> he's starting to write up contingency plans for his contingency plans so uh Jin, has Jin been doing anything interesting this week at all Sorry, Goldfish person. No problem. So, uh, what Jen has been up to is he's been getting a little bit in invested in uh, what's been going on with Chet and realizing that weird stuff keeps happening whenever he sees him. So, uh, he's been taking the soil samples that he found in the pond from last week and he's been analyzing them to uh, see if he can determine anything and what's been going on. Interesting. All right. Well, so far, I'll just tell you right now, at the moment, you haven't turned up anything specific, but uh, you might at some point. At least that's what you think. You think that you're getting somewhere. Where, you're not sure, but you think you're getting someplace. Finally, Everest. You hear? Nora? We don't want any. There you are. What's, your comp What's the comp up to this week? Arresting demons for illegal activity. Okay. All right. Well. So, in other words, nothing. Right. So, we're going to set the scene up. Or, actually, I'm not going to set the scene up. Um, I didn't tell him he was going to do this, but, uh, Teach, would you mind describing the house that Harrison lives in for me? Well, the uh, house that Harrison lives in, it's, uh, Less house and more sort of run down, you know, one bed, one room sort of uh, thing. I mean, it, it's got a couple of rooms, but it's it's uh, not even on the outskirts of the bad part of town. It's like beyond that. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, this is a ramshackle house, um, overgrown. You know, one of those things where you wouldn't even give it a second look walking by. Um, it, it's in uh, various states of disrepair. The roof is still there, but um, you know it, it's definitely it's definitely seen better days. Gotcha. Uh, it's it's all on one floor for the most part. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely it has definitely seen much better times and better days. So, does Harrison have his own room? Yes. So here's the scene. The comic panel opens up with that house, but it's late at night. We're talking around, you know, 1130, 12 o'clock in the morning, well, 1130 at night to 12 o'clock in the morning. Harrison, you're in your room and you hear something. It's a knocking on your window. He rolls over in the other direction and goes, pulls the blanket over his head and continues to go to sleep. The knocking doesn't stop. It gets annoyingly constant. And more rapid. He puts the pillow over his head and continues to sleep. At some point, you're actually concerned that he, whatever's out there may break the window. Do you start hearing muffled... I don't want to say whispering, because it's hard to whisper through a window. But clearly someone's trying to get your attention. And you might sort of recognize the voice. Roll me a perception check. Oh, yeah. It's marble. Harrison takes the pillow off his head, without looking, picks up one of the daggers from the floor, and just chucks it at the window. Okay. Um, 
I'm assuming you shatter the window at this point? <laughs> Depends on my role. Okay. Well, considering it's a not moving object, uh, yeah, you're going to hit it. <laughs> All right, the window gets to make a toughness save. Uh, glass has a, an eight toughness of five. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know what uh, the Windows toughness save would be. Yes, Glass has an innate toughness of five. Uh, it is making a... Uh, it actually is going to pass because it was a 20 it needed to hit. Nice. Or 21, so it's going to pass. So the knife just sort of, I'm assuming, hits the window, probably scares the crap out of Marble, but just leaves a pink and goes... Boop, 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 boop. Harrison then puts the pillow back on his head and rolls over and goes back to sleep. So, at this point, does your window have locks on it, by the way? Um, there's nothing in this house worth stealing. Right. There's no locks. So, <laughs> instead of running away, the window starts to open. <laughs> As you hear, Hey! Harrison! Harrison! At this point, with the pillow, you know, pillow's up, he's on his left side, so the pillow's up. He puts the pillow off, he doesn't turn around, he just puts his left hand out, and it starts to glow, pointing directly at the window. Yeah, hey, look, it's me, Marble, look, I need your help! I don't get to sleep well very often. I suggest you leave before I fire this. Harrison! I want to sleep. Chet's in trouble! I don't care. I'm tired. It's like 1 in the morning. Go away. No, it isn't. It's 11.30 at night. <laughs> Harrison looks up. No, that's 1.30, Marble. You're missing a 1. Oh. Okay, sure, but whatever. Sorry. A temporal demon point thing. Look, no, seriously, Chet's missing. I don't know where he is. I need your help. Wait. So you don't know where... He... Oh! So that means I could call that police officer and get you arrested. No, I'm because still his pack. no longer have your human. I have, I have a valid pack. That's not what it means. It's... I can't find him. If I can't find him, that means one thing. He's unconscious. So he's probably trying to sleep like the rest of no, the No, not sleep unconscious. Not sleeping. He's unconscious. What do you think happens when you sleep? That's not I'm like that. Unconscious. It's not the same thing. Look, if he was sleeping, he would be home right now. He probably just got himself beat up after... You know, failing to be able to pay a debt. It's fine, Marble. All go he, away. Look, all he told me is he was going to go investigate someone while I was gone. I got back this, this evening and he was gone. I'm worried about him. I need your help. Come on. So you decided that coming and getting people at 1.30 in the morning was the best way to do it. Well, if he's in trouble, if he, yeah, because if he dies, then I won't have a packed mortal. Ted, I kind of like it. Marble. Hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like you. I don't want to help you. And I'm certainly not agreeing to help you. You're a demon. No. Go away. I'm trying to sleep. So, at this point, you do hear a female voice in your head saying, Are you sure you just want to dismiss him that quickly? He's going to think back. I just want to sleep. If you want to help him, get out of my head and go help him. I'm not stopping you. Actually, you are, but you don't know that. Look, this is still in his head. Mm. I'm tired. I want to sleep. I don't like the demon. I really don't want to help the guy who I stole $500 from either. You know, that may be part of the problem. That mark is a hero's mark. Heroes don't have times of call. They're on call all the time. 
I'm not a hero. I'm a kid who got in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, you weren't in the wrong times, son. Maybe the wrong place. But I've seen it in you. You're a little more than I thought you were. Why don't you prove it? And I tell you what. I'll give you something. Unless it's silence right now so I can go to sleep, I don't care. Don't you want to know? No, I really don't. I just want to sleep. Yes, you do. No, I really just want to sleep. No, you want to know more about that mark is what I mean. <sighs> this point is going to roll over. As he rolls over, he picks up the other dagger from the floor. Because the mattress is just, it's not on a bed frame, right. it's just the mattress on the floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just sort of rolls over, still has the dagger in hand. At this point, now he's pointing it directly at Marble. Look. Friendly suggestion next time. If you get home in the early evening and can't find somebody, don't wait till it's ass o'clock in the morning to come and get help. I didn't wait, I just got here. And don't say you got back in the evening, because this is late at night. Well, I'm sorry, it was evening in the demon place. You know what, never mind. The time thing, it's different. Have you even bothered to look for him? Or did you just immediately come running for help? If he was awake, I would know exactly where he is. That wasn't the question I asked. Hmm? Yeah, I looked all over the house. He wasn't there. Okay. He has a penchant. And he says it penchant that way, because he's trying to sound cool. What is that, actually? Penchant. Okay. Penchant. <laughs> Thank you. For acquiring debts and gambling. Have you checked any of the casinos around the area? He promised me he wouldn't go out gambling without me, because he knows he needs me to do any of that. Okay. Just because he promised you, was it a binding pact, or was it just him saying it? I. Look, he's not going to cheat on me like that. Number one. You, but number two. Are you sure? Yes, actually, I'm very sure. No, he was very, very clear he was going to be investigating somebody. It's only been a couple of days. He wouldn't have done that. Besides, he didn't have any money to do that. Can't imagine why that is. Well, okay, we've been on a bad losing streak before that, but it's going to turn around. At this point, Harrison has, has, is sitting up on the edge of the mattress, so it's, it's he's like really sitting down, like almost in the fetal position because it's on the floor. Right. Look, I appreciate what you're doing. I do. You're trying to find your your, your packed mortal. I get it. It's one thirty in the morning. I just don't care. He would you come to find me- you if you were in trouble. No, he wouldn't. Yes, he would. He has no reason to. I've got no reason to go find him. Marble kind of frowns and sadly and just sighs and just kind of slicks off the window and just kind of starts to sadly walk away. Harrison goes and lays back down, tries to cover up, and is just tossing and turning. So, Marvel runs off. So, Travis! Travis! Give us a little shout out of where you live. I live in an apartment complex, uh, much nicer than Harrison's. <laughs> um, it's it's like not like super high end, but uh, 
it's nice. It's what he has is a one room apartment. He's the only one who lives there. Has a nice like living area, kitchen, stuff like that. Nothing over the top, but it works for him. Gotcha. He typically uh, he has his computer in his bedroom. Uh, typically, it's on his computer. Gets up, crawls into bed, and that's his night. Nice. So at one thirty, actually about one forty-five in the morning, uh, you hear an incessant knocking on your window. Well, her, uh, he actually wouldn't have a window. Oh, okay. Then your door. Yeah, it had to be the door. Um, he doesn't have a bed. What? Wait, wait, wait. What apartment would allow you to have a bedroom without a window? That's like a safety hazard. <laughs> No, apartments just have to have a window. They have to have a second escape. That's true. I said his bedroom doesn't have a window. That's true. All right, so yeah, so you hear somebody knocking at your door. It takes him a while to get there. That's fine. <laughs> so when you open the door, you see a somewhat exacerbatedly tired marble standing, like, you know, down. You know, he's, he's only about two and a half, three feet tall. So he's just standing there, like, huffing, like, hell, eh, eh, finally. How exhausted Marble looks. Yeah. Travis looks five times as exhausted. Right. Hey. Hey. Oh, you look t- terrible. Uh, it, I mean, great. You look great. Hey, I need your help. Do you know what time it is? Yeah, I, I've been made very well aware of what time it is. Sorry, I thought it was earlier... But I got just got back from the demon plane and it wasn't that late. Look, um, Chet's missing, and I think I know where he's at. But I need your help. Before he actually gets the whole way through that, Travis sort of just like with as much effort as he can muster, which is not much, just sort of swings the door shut on Marvel. <laughs> Hey! He starts knocking again. Come on, I need some help. I thought you guys were like heroes or something. I'm not a hero. I'm tired. You ruined my schedule three different times. Now you're ruining my sleep schedule. Do you want to hear me talk about how ruining my sleep schedule ruins my other schedules? If it gets you to come with me, yes. Could you come like, see me first? No. I wanted to bring Harrison with me since I know he's kind of a friend of yours, but... Thank God you didn't. Okay. Because then he'd know where I live. And I don't want that. Uh, I'm pretty sure he does already. At least Chet knows. I don't know. Maybe maybe he doesn't. I don't know. He's never been here. No. So. Okay. Sure. Wait, how does Chet know where I live? Because I know where you live. We, we it, He's a private investigator. He looked, he looked into no, everyone. he's a freaking gambler. He was a private investigator, and he's getting back into it, I promise. So why don't you just hire him to find himself? What? Because he's the one missing! Okay, well, don't you have that whole mind thing with him? He's unconscious is the problem. Not like sleeping unconscious, but actually unconscious. I mean, something bad's happened to him. Because, no, I don't know where he's at. If we knock you unconscious, will that make you be able to meet him again? Okay, Marble stands there for a moment. And not that you can see this because the door's closed. He stands there for a moment and considers this for a second. No, 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 that wouldn't work. No. So, we're supposed to help you, but you don't know where he is. Well, I have an idea. 
Coming from you, that's not very reassuring. No, no, no. There's only one place he would have gone. There's, there's only one place he could be right now. I think. I, look, look, I've got. I, I, look. I, we just have to go get one more person, and then we go to this place where I'm pretty sure he's got to be. And not Harrison. He doesn't want to come. Whatever. Leave him alone. About my schedule. I'll help you as much as I can, I promise. Just please. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> Look, it, it, You have chat. You don't need me. Uh, no, I... I'm not making a pact with you if that's what you're worried about. I've already got a pact, mortal. I can't make two. I, well, I could, actually. But no, I'm not looking to. I just... I need your... Please. So help me. If this ends up wasting my time, I'm going to take you to the nearest bridge and punch you off of it. I mean, you wouldn't be the first... Okay, cool. Fine. I, I accept. Marble hears silence for like three minutes. He hears silence? Is it the yes. sound of silence? Yes. He hears nothing. Hello, darkness, my old, old friend. friend. I mean, if Marvel wants to start saying that, he can. <laughs> he but doesn't know. He hears nothing. Uh, he's pacing outside. Because he hasn't heard any, He hasn't heard a direct no either, so he's, he's just waiting out there. Then he hears, like, a bunch of shuffling around. And, like, furniture sliding around. Which... Furniture sliding around? Yes. Okay. And after about... Three and a half, four minutes... Travis opens the door. Looks down at Marble... Since this is totally off schedule for me, I've been wanting to wear this anyway. And he just kind of starts walking. And Marvel sees that Travis is wearing a complete spandex superhero outfit. Marvel. You know, for someone who has a strict schedule, you found time to stitch yourself something to wear. Marvel's looking up at you in, like, awesome, like, all like... Oh, that is so cool. And as he walks down the hall, the door right next to Marvel slams. <laughs> ah! Oh, that is so cool. All right, great. By the way, teacher, were you saying that as, as Harrison or... <laughs> That's what I'm going to say when they walk out of the apartment okay, so, complex. Yeah, so we get out of the apartment complex, and Harrison... Where, where's Harrison at during all of this? Just, uh, you know, in a tree somewhere where he can be obscure, just sort of watching and waiting. Gotcha. So, yeah, so we get outside. Yeah, that's gonna... So, for someone who has such a strict schedule, where did you find the time to find a spandex suit? Huh? Harrison? I didn't expect to see you here. Or up a tree. And suddenly, the tree that Harrison's in starts shaking violently. <sighs> he will jump down. It has less to do with helping you, Marble, and more to do with the fact that whatever the hell this is in my head wouldn't shut up. Marble looks at you and says, Okay, so that is something in your head, then. He looks at Travis. Nice digs. This is what happens when my entire day's schedule is thrown off and I just have to reset. <laughs> By the way, at least I'm not going schizophrenic. Wait, hold on, hold on. And Harrison just is staring at Travis for a good 
45 seconds to a minute. I didn't think you knew how to not talk at 45,000 words a minute. Give me a chance to wake up, because I have a vent to go on. It looks down at Marble. I don't want to know what this cost you. I'm not sure I know yet either, but that's okay. Alright, we got one more place to go before we get there, so let's go. So, he, like, waves you guys as he starts running off at a much faster speed than anything his size should probably be able to run. But you can still keep up with him since you're, like, more than double his size. So, Nora, why don't you explain the house or apartment or whatever that Everest lives in? So, it's, you know, standard house. Kind of out in the suburbs, just you know, magical portals in the backyard. Yeah, you know, nothing major. <laughs> right. So yeah, just a suburban home. Nice. So, um, at about two o'clock in the morning, uh, you're gonna hear a ringing at your doorbell. At this point, Everest gets up, grabs his magical weaponry. Opens the door with the uh, magical gun pointed out the, the door crack. So, um, what you see is Marble standing there, and Harrison and, and uh, Travis are behind him somewhere, maybe, doing what. Uh, but you see Marble, and he's like, Officer! Officer, we need your help! I'm off duty. I know, but you're the only one who really knows us, so I think you're the best person to come help us out. Plus, you know the perpetrator. What? 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 Okay, so Chet's missing, and I think I know who took him. Go follow a missing person and report at the police station. Leave He's in danger. He's unconscious right now. So go tell the police. I am right here. I am off. It's two in the morning. You woke me up. I, no. Police officers are never off, right? That's what I thought I... I don't know. But you're the perfect also, wait, wait, hold on. Hold, wait, hold on. He's unconscious. Yes. You're under arrest. No, I'm not. You are away from your human. Which I'm allowed to be. I have a pact. I don't have to be next to him all the time. But if they're unconscious, you must have paperwork. And I'm sure you haven't gotten he that. He whips out his, his scroll and shows it to you. <laughs> Which is uh, all in order right. right there. Demon, magic well, pockets, it's a thing. But the, the T's not crossed here, so I'm still taking you in. It's a legal document. It's it's perfectly fine. legal. Fine. It looks forged, but uh, whatever. It's his signature. Who took him? Where is he? Okay. Do we really yeah, I guess I have to. I'm police. Fine. Damn it. Right. Why'd I have to take Awesome. Alright, great. Come on. So he like F if you get I don't know, do you get dressed or do you just walk outside with what you've got on? One one second. Mm. Never cast a quick spell and is completely in his uniform. Great. So clothing. So What the heck are the two of you wearing? Like seriously, guys. Like <laughs> This is what I always wear. I only have like two outfits. Yeah, but what's with spandex boy over here? You have no room to judge. I, I, I'm a police officer. Right, you're not a judge. I can't even do his job right. I know you let him, you you let him talk you out of arresting him. This paperwork's valid as far as I can tell. I'll call it in the morning and confirm. But it is morning. <laughs> Don't make me arrest you. <laughs> Alright, alright. All right. Three squares, right? You don't want them in there, trust me. I had to... Um, I, I had to get... Harrison sort of has this look. Maybe I do? It's magical prison. You don't. Yeah, no, it's not... You're basically in stasis for most of it. Um, 
So, anyway. So what you're saying is I could be asleep then? If you call... Um, it's not, sort of. Yeah. You don't feel great coming out of it, let me tell you. Anyway, anyway, okay. never mind that. Come where, on. Where, where is Chad? Where come on, come on. He, he just starts waving you and he starts leading you off in another direction. Two. Wouldn't, wouldn't this be easier if we used portals? No. Actually, no. I it, No. <laughs> I haven't tested myself on a portal yet. I'm not about ready to. Oh, they're fun. Um, when our portal department's actually doing their job properly, which is never... So, so, yeah. So we're already missing one person from this uh, little impromptu, unnecessary posse that we have going. I don't want to be that second missing person. So, no. So, Jin, describe what your place looks like. Uh, Dark, Mike. Sorry. Oh. TG didn't tell me. <laughs> not the GM tonight, not my job. Right. So, Jin's place is on like, the very far outskirts of town, so there's like, nothing around his place. So, you would see just like a normal like, sidewalk leading up to like, a, just an everyday looking house. But one thing you would notice is like the outside of the house is... The lawn is perfectly like manicured, like every single like blade of grass is exactly the same length. There's absolutely like, no dirt or anything on like the uh, walkway. It just looks like absolutely like, pristine. Nice. So um. And the, one, the other thing I notice is that um, there's torches in the house. There's no like electricity. Ooh. They're just like uh, torchlight. Nice. So this is the house that um, Marble is leading all of you to. As he runs up, he says, Officer, he's got to be here. This guy, uh, he's got this thing for Chet. I don't know what it is, but he's here. He has to be the guy who's done this. Wait, hold on, Marble. <clears throat> so, let me get this straight. You woke us all up to come and get Chet. When... The only thing you're going on is the fact that this guy has a thing for him? Yeah! Well, where else would he be? The casino? He's not, If he were awake, I would know. Besides, he's not at the casino. Okay, look, Marble, who is this guy? He's that dude who's shown up, like, like, uh, at the park and then at the sandwich shop. Like, he's crazy. I didn't want to come out here by myself. So instead of, 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 of coming out here by yourself, you decided to amass us to show up and accuse the crazy guy who shoots lightning of kidnapping Chet. Yeah, basically. Do, do, do you have any proof? Well, just the attitude he's got. He always goes after Chet for, like, no reason. Alright, now I do have to arrest you. No. I haven't done anything yeah. illegal. I need I mean, your help. I mean, to be You've fair... You've accused him of a crime. To, That's to be not fair, illegal. Marble. To be fair, Marble. <laughs> With no not the, He's not the only one who's gone after Chet for no reason. Huh? I mean, you stealing money from him is totally different. Wait, you stole money uh, from him? You're a magic cop. You don't have anything to do with this. I, I mean, if he's just gonna let, if he, if he was just gonna let, the, I didn't steal it. I have it in my notebook to, to to give it back to him. I was just borrowing it. Chet doesn't know I borrowed it. Marvel does, so it's okay. But yeah. Chet right. doesn't know I borrowed it, so let's not tell him. It was kind of funny, actually. So what you're saying is you're a co-conspirator to his theft. No, I just watched him do it and kind of chuckled and never told Chet what happened. I figured since they're bonded, he's it was it was a it worked. Pulls uh, 
Everest just pulls out this gigantic, like, comical size magical rule book and reads through it real quick. No, no, actually, that's that's not not theft. If the demon is aware of it, it's not theft. There you you're, go. You're Though demons accusing people of crimes they haven't committed, then we've got a gray area here now. Well, no problem with this. We don't know he hasn't committed anything, but say he's got to know. By the way, Jen, at any point you want to like wake up from whatever all this commotion outside, just go right ahead. <laughs> oh, Jen's not asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like, Jin just standing on the top of the point of the roof just watching all of this being really creepy. So I mean I mean, to be fair, if 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 this guy I can't remember if he told us his name, was gonna go after Chet, there there would be two reasons. Number one, he ruined his sandwich, and number two, he put ketchup Chet put ketchup on his sandwich. I mean that that that's grounds enough for going after somebody. I mean, he's not wrong. Right, exactly. Look, you see, that was such a terrible thing. But, and he said something about the water. The part, I don't even remember. It was so weird. And random, too. I don't get it. I think he just doesn't like Chet. Or maybe, Marble, he doesn't like you. He doesn't know do me. Well, okay. yet. Yeah. Look, no one likes me, I guess. It... <sighs> Whatever. Guys, I just... Please, just, I didn't want to come here by myself. I think I, I really Chet's the only friend I not even a friend Just, well whatever. I know that I'm not going to go knock on the door and accuse him of anything uh, Everest are you, you going to do that um I have no reason to so no oh, oh, Mar Mar Marble already is walking up to the door Travis <laughs> oh good at this point uh, Harrison's just going to find something to hide behind <laughs> Marvel when not Harrison, when Harrison does that, whatever he hides behind moves. <laughs> he hides behind Travis. Who proceeds? Travis moves. <laughs> this point, I was so right before up the portal department uh, to to be sent home. <laughs> So right before our marble can open the door, it just opens by itself. He just wants to and knock. He, he didn't go to open. <laughs> What's that? It's funny he just wants to knock. knock he just opens. Yeah. yeah, as I say, I was like, that. <laughs> oh, so he like, trips forward, like onto his muzzle. And he just kind of like look up, and you just see Jin like just standing over a marble. Ah! He crawls away. Like scampers, like like he's terrified. So Jen kind of just like looks around outside. He can automatically see where uh, Harrison is and um, Everest. And he just kind of like looking at him. and He goes, "Is it October already? What kids get off my lawn?" I'm not on your lawn. I'm on your sidewalk. He's Actually, looking over technically, at I'm on. I, I, I'm on the easement of your sidewalk, so I'm I'm perfectly legal to be here. I love the lawyer talk we're getting into in this episode. <laughs> like, when you say that, Harrison just looks over, looks over at Travis. What's an easement? Kids, please get off my lawn. So, Marvel, so, like, stop calling me a kid. I'm like 30. I'm, I'm a police officer. I'm not a kid. So by these two nut jobs, I'm not sure about. So by the way, Marble is now current. This demon is. Yeah, Marble. By the way, is, is currently wrapped around Everest's leg, like he's scared to death. Get, get off my leg! Uh, uh, uh. He, he finally, let's go. One person's wanting for something to get off his leg. The other person's wanting for something to get off his lawn. <laughs> What can I do for you, people? What? What? Why are you here at two o'clock in the morning? I'm doing some research. I, I can't be bothered by you. Uh, if we knew, we would tell you. So Marble looks you, up and says, "Yeah, that that thing down there woke us all up." Too. Marble looks up and says, "Chet's missing, and and I'm pretty sure you know where he's at, right?" Who? Chet the skunk. No, oh, we're the smelly done, one. Yeah. Yes, him. I have no idea. What? 
Why would I know where he is? He annoys me. I want nothing to do with him. Oh. Okay, I'm so sure you can't. You took him. Why? Why would I take him? Cause you, you like, I don't know. You get angry at him for like no reason. He ruined my sandwich, and he stepped in my research. Would you not be angry as well? Well, no, because neither of those were his fault. <laughs> to be fair, it looks like everything makes this guy angry. Yeah, I guess so. Well, shoot, well, how are we going to find Chet then? Did you try looking at his hobbies, or what he enjoys? Well, he... He couldn't have done any of those, and, um... Uh, well, he said he was going to investigate someone, but I don't... He didn't say who. And I don't know where he's at. So, and I figured he ran into you, because that was the last thing we... You were the last topic we were talking about before he left. But it, apparently did, you were... Did you try checking... Did you try checking his cell phone or his computer? Cell phone isn't on, because I guess I tried. Actually, it's not that it's not on. Marble holds up a cell phone. It's that I've got it, because he left it at home, which makes no sense. Who did he call last? I checked. It's been wiped. Can't help you. And he just closes the door and goes back inside. <laughs> Marble sighs. Says, well, how else am I going to find him? I don't know, maybe you should start by telling us who the hell he was trying to find to begin with. I don't know, he didn't tell me. He just said he had an idea or something he wanted to go look into. Said we were talking about that guy, you know, before I left, so I just assumed it was him. Hey, Travis. That's you. What's the nearest bridge to, I mean, hey, Harrison, what's the nearest <laughs> bridge to here? Um... Uh, about half a mile east from here, you should have one. It's not the highest one, though. About a mile away, there's going to be one a little bit higher. Uh, because, please tell me, please, please tell me we're dropping Marble off the... Marble looks at both of you and says, Do you have any idea how little that's going to do anything? It'll make us feel better. <laughs> Probably just at this point, uh, ever since this point, just turns his back and says, Go ahead, I'm not, I see nothing. Okay, but wait, how are we going to find him? Wait! I mean, like, who else has eyes over the entire village, over the entire city? At that, the door opens up, and you just see Jin just staring at it, just staring at you. And he just motions you to come inside. Oh, I don't think I want to. Yeah, no, but I also don't want to tell him no. <laughs> So Harrison's like, yeah, I don't want to either, but I also don't want to tell him no. So yeah. he's gonna like slowly start walking up and be like, this is a little. Uh. So yeah, so the comic panel is both him and Harris, uh, Harrison and Marble, both kind of looking the exact same. Like they're both like not wanting to go in. In fact, Marble looks over at Travis at one point and says, "So a uh, bridge might be a better place right now." No, my bed would be a better place right now. So, if you want to find your friend, hurry up. I don't have all night. So they go, so you go. Travis go. looks at Marble. He's totally talking to you there. I think that's it. So he, he, Marble goes All of you, him. let's go. So, so he goes inside. So, I'm assuming everyone comes in. Well, Marble's in. It takes a while, but Travis gets there. Alright. Everest walks in. Yeah, this better be good. So, uh... Jin looks down at Marble and tells him not to touch anything, knowing that he has stolen stuff in the past. Marble hasn't stolen anything. Oh, that's right, it was Harrison that stole stuff. Harrison, Harrison. Okay. 
So he would drive up to Harris and then. What? 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 What do I do? What do I do? Just don't touch anything. I don't want anything to break. So as um, Jen leads you through his house, he's just kind of like lighting torches as he goes, as in like uh, Snape almost from Hogwarts. How you know how he like waves, waves his hand and the torches just kind of like light up. And he brings you into a room and there's a uh, scrying stone uh, uh, on the floor. And he points at um, Marble and tells him to uh, make use of it to uh, locate uh, Chet. At this point, Travis Lane's light looks over his shoulder at Harrison. I thought Marble made deals with the devil. <laughs> huh? Hey, scrying stones are not demonic. No, it's not. And we don't have a devil. It's just we make packs with whatever. Common misconception. It's okay. I didn't say the scrying scroll was demonic. I said everything in the air feels demonic. <laughs> right. Uh, I just don't like modern technology. No, apparently not. All right, so what do you want me to do? Go stand in the circle. It will feed your line back to your friend, and you'll figure out where he is. Okay. Marble looks at the circle, kind of toes it a little bit, and it's like finally just kind of takes a deep breath and just kind of walks inside, like. So that, right when he gets to the center, uh, Jin snaps his fingers, and all, like the corners of the circle uh, start glowing like a bright blue light, and that, it kind of just encapsulates uh, marble inside of it. Ah! Uh, okay, what is this? Now you need to do your thing. You need to follow your link back to your friend. Well, that's the problem, though. He's unconscious. I can't follow Link back to him. His mortality is unconscious, yes, but your Link is still there. Aren't you a demon? You should know this stuff. Yeah, I do. It's not like I've ever had this problem before. I never actually normally leave a pack mortal, but I had to. So Jin just sides and starts muttering on like a uh, incantation, mm -hmm. and it kind of uh, starts running images through uh, Marvel's mind of where Chet may be or who, like the last few people that he's the last few places that Chet has seen. Right. Does does anybody is, is this flashing up for anyone else or is this just all inside? It's all it's all in uh, Marvel's head. All right. So after that, Marvel kind of gasps and says. <gasps> I think I saw it. He kind of falls down because he's like shocking his head. Because it actually hurts a little bit, but... Well, you're in a field of electricity, yes, it would hurt. Yeah. Well, not only just that, but also hurts his head. Like, yeah, there's that, and then it also hurts too. He's like, I got it! I think! Ow! How did... Okay, I got a question. How did that work? Jin just kind of—I almost said Malk here. <laughs> Jin just kind of like smirks at him and lifts his eyebrow and goes, "You're not the only one who knows the uncanny art." I'm gonna go with magic. Magic's probably a good answer. Magic is that's that's so magic. That's that's awesome. That's magic, but not normal magic. Okay. So just simply follow the ley lines of energy back to the pact, and then it follows the ley lines back to your friend. It's very self-explanatory. You should have known this. It's Demon Summoning 101. Yeah, I can't. Luck demons don't really get a lot of that. Um... Now, if you want to see some real magic, I can show you some real fun demons I can pull out of this thing. Oh, I'd rather not. Uh, if you wouldn't mind. Since not, the others don't really like us luck demons all that much. Anyway. Okay. Does anyone like you luck demons? I mean, most pack mortals actually get along with theirs.
Anyway. I think I know where he's at. Oh, but he may have froze. I think he might have. Oh, dear. He, he did on Discord, at least. Either that, or he's itching his head really, 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 really fast, and he can't even see his hand. Or he's just going really, 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 really slow, and it's not moving at all. Or my internet has decided to kick up. But... Every day I'm buffering. There we go. We're back. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yay! Alright, we're back. That's cool. Alright. So, anyway. Um, Marble, after all this, Marble falls backwards. And he says, he says, anyway, I know where he's at. At least I think I know where he's at. At least I know where he was. Peter McLiley. That's who he's looking into. So, he's trying to get himself a good Irish beer? Everybody roll me a insight check. Everest. Okay, Everest is going to be the one who gets this, but you're going to know. That is extremely appropriate for my insight check. I know, I know. Really is. Everest, you know that Peter McLiley was formerly a used car salesman who is now currently a realtor, or at least a real estate agent, who is in the business of selling houses and empty plots of land. Uh, crooks just go from one job to the next, don't they? Uh, I maybe. Uh, um, I don't know who that is. And I don't know why Chet would have been investigating him. Well, used car salesman, realtor. Yeah, I'm sure there's some shady business going on. There. I saw an empty lot in the um the countryside. That's where he's got to be. But why would he be there? Whatever. Let's go. Um, he looks at you and says, "Everest, we probably gonna need your portal because it's countryside, which is a bit away from here." Well, let's get the portal department on the line. See how this goes. I wonder if they're awake tonight. <laughs> So you call the portal department, and they're there. Happily. The, at least the one... You know, it's it's late at night, so there's just, like, one guy. It's uh, Bob from it's Normally from Accounting. For an hour. Yeah. It's it's Bob from Normally Accounting. <laughs> Say, yo, what's up? We, we need a portal to... And there was... Sends kind of the location through a, a magical communication device. All right, we dial it up here. All right, you got you got the coordinates in there, right, Bob? Right, right. So as he sits there and says, "Yeah, yeah, I'm good." You, everyone else, give me a perception check other than Everest. Okay, Harrison and Travis are both going to notice. Um, Marble takes a coin out of what would be a pocket on a human, but, like, you don't know where he grabbed it from necessarily. But he takes a coin out, which looks like just your average, like, quarter, and flips it. And he catches it. And the moment he catches it, the guy says, on the other line, says, Yeah, yeah, no, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. And he hits a button, or does a magic thing, whatever, and the... Poof! Portal shows up in front of you. 
Well, I said he's got it, so um, I'm sure this won't end a horrible. <laughs> All right. Travis spends like the next minute actually trying to figure out what just happened because even though he saw it, his mind is not processing it right now. <laughs> yeah, the, the magic. It's a portal. Just, just, just walk through it. Come on, that's fine. I think we had that discussion already. It's... Marble goes charging in head first. It'll be fine. It's Bob from accounting. What can go wrong? <laughs> So, hold on. You expect me to believe that the accounting department is going to properly utilize the portal. Oh, it's not the, yeah, apart no. it's not the apartment. It's just Bob from accounting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bob, Bob's uh, freelance is in the, in, the, in the portal department. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. I think. <laughs> Maybe. Marble's already gone, by the way. He went. He's if, it, had... if it's the if it, if it's Bob one, we're good. If it's Bob two, we may be in trouble. I think it's Bob one. I don't. Well, hey, look, Marble's gone. He can find him. We can all go back home and go to bed. Did it ever occur to you that you may have problems with your portals because you let people on accounting touch them? <laughs> I'm sure that's not the problem. Did you ever think that you have a problem with your portals because you don't think that there's a problem with people on accounting touching them? It's accounting. They're good with numbers. They should be able to punch them into the system correctly. I don't think you believe that works how it actually works. That made more sense in my head, but That's I'm okay. going with it. That's fine. You're sleepy. It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. The guys in the counting are great guys. They do a good job. They they not technically us... sleepy, <laughs> right? Look, just go uh, through the damn portal. Is there a bridge on the other side? Probably. You can push the demon off the bridge. I'm gonna pull I'll, I'll, off the I'll even look the other way. Look, I don't even care. The demon's annoying me. I'm ready for him to. I'm ready for him to make a mistake so I can throw him in jail. <laughs> If this portal screws up, I'm throwing you off the bridge. Um, that's threatening a police officer. I'm gonna have to arrest you. And since I'm having to go through the portal, you have to come with me. I would like to see you try to put handcuffs on me. Ooh. Well, hold on. No. Nope. <laughs> Whatever you just tried to do there didn't work. I was going to say, if you just tried to put handcuffs on me, I just put them on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you make my spell do that? Also, um, does Everest actually carry a real pair of handcuffs on? No. They're magical. Why would I need a real pair of hands? This... So he has no non-magical means of, of holding people. I, I'm part of the black magic police force. Why would I... Why would I... <laughs> these, these are magical and demonic just, things. Regular handcuffs don't, don't... Just because of... Um, the state Travis is currently in, he just kind of laughs and he's like, your magic has no power here. Wow. <laughs> so through all this, Jin is starting to kind of not get annoyed, but he's starting to just look, look from person to person and kind of like trying to shoo them into the portal to get out of his house. All right. So, do you all end up going through the portal then? I, I mean, yes. Gotcha. So, once you've done that... General look um, hesitant at first, and then get, I guess, curious enough to uh, follow up through, so he will go find the skunk as well. Alright. So... Harrison looks at Travis. You going? Uh, 
At this point, I don't know how to get back home, so I guess. I know how to get back to your house. And I'm just going to go anyway. <laughs> All right, so. This one, Harrison's going to look around, shrug, and walk through the and as he's walking through the portal, Travis mutters to himself, I gotta make getting dressed up like this worth something. Absolutely. So Jin goes through the last and just kind of waves his hand, all the flames in his house go out. And nice. it just kind of goes back to dormant. Nice. Alright, so. You guys end up at the scene that you are now seeing on the roll 20. Um... Although it's really dark outside, I couldn't find a good nighttime picture of a plot of land. Which, by the way, roll credits. So, um... So, you guys show up here, and you see a sign out front. You know, one of those realtor signs? You know, like, call this number or whatnot. You definitely see that. Uh, you see the guy's picture on said sign. Let me... Hold on a second. Because I have... I actually did a thing. I have a thing for you so you guys, guys can see what Peter McLeary looks like. There you go. So you see that guy on a sign... What guy? Oh, that didn't work for you guys? No, I don't see anything. Nope. I hit say I hit show to players. It worked on my end. Wait, hold on a second. Let's be able to do this. No, wrong window. See the problem too is I have like five windows open. That didn't work. Uh, in player's oh, that's right. I gotta put in everybody's journal. There you go. I've never wanted to punch somebody in the face before, but I'm looking at their picture. <laughs> I know, that's right? That's not true. It's so perfect. But yeah, it's face so people. douchey. I know. Uh, I don't want to punch him in the face. I want to make himself punch himself in the face. I mean, you can do that. So. Well, almost. So anyway. So you guys have shown up at this empty plot of land. And there's not, there is a building in the background. It looks like a storage building shed kind of thing. Um, you can kind of see it sticking up way over there. But, uh. You know, marbles looking around like, oh, goodness. I wonder what this is all about. Why would you have this random pl plot of land out here? This makes. If he's such a good realtor, why wouldn't he have sold this? So, Everest, there's one thing that you remember from your insight check way back then. He was a terrible used car salesman. But as a realtor, which he's just kind of become in the last few months, he's had an amazing selling streak. Like, you would almost call it lucky. Travis just looks at the picture. <laughs> How does someone that looks maybe a year or two older than me fail miserably at one job and then become super successful in a harder version of that job. So, um, Marble looks up at you and says, well, what, do you, what do you mean? How hard is selling houses? And then we're oh. just kind of looking at Marble funny at this point. Travis looks down at Marvel and says, So what's harder? 
trying to convince someone to give you thirty thousand dollars or trying to convince someone to give you one hundred and eighty thousand dollars? Okay, fair point. But wait a minute. Wait. So how quickly did he turn himself around? I don't know. He can't be more About than two months. Five. Months? Oh, yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Marble's eyes get really wide and says, "That sounds like." And do you hear like like an actual luck demon? Unlike you, I am a luck demon. If you're a luck demon, you're the unluckiest luck demon I've ever seen. There's a reason. Maybe maybe Marvel was with this guy when he failed, and he just got rid of Marvel, and then he became successful. If I would have, if I if he would have been with me at all, I would have looked with him at first. Well, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> How long have you been with Chad? Um, about five weeks now. How long has this guy been a realtor? Oh, him? Oh, it's been God. it's been over three. It's been about two or three months. I mean, it can kind of ish line up. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, close enough. I didn't have I mean, a pack mortal before Chet, like months ago. It's been years. Well, to be fair, he doesn't look like a mortal. He looks like a demon himself. I mean, you're 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 not wrong. I mean. Uh. So at this point, you guys all hear a voice behind you that says, "Well, actually, I'm not a demon at all." And y'all turn around. Travis, <laughs> Travis just looks over at Harrison and says, "Please don't punch him right away." <laughs> don't or do both. At this point, you see Harrison reaching down to his boot for the dagger. Just tell me to throw it, and I will. I'll throw it for you. <laughs> okay. At this point, Harrison's just going to loosen it up so the dagger is accessible to Travis. <laughs> so, um, you turn around and you see the this Peter himself standing next to his side. Kind of, he has this big douchey grin on his face. Um. My he, god, I think I thought you couldn't get uglier than in your picture. Well, looks like I got a bunch of people in my, uh, in my empty lot. That's interesting. I do have open house hours. They're not normally at three in the morning. I, I'm Why here on official here business. Three in the morning. And yeah, that's my line, but sure, yes. <laughs> Answer the question. It's my uh, it's my lot to sell. I have every right to be here, officer. Well, first of all, no one said you didn't have a right to be here. You're wondering why we're here at three in the morning. You're a real estate agent. No real estate agent's ever doing any showings at three in the morning. Oh, you know, I sell to all people of all kinds. That's what I do around here, and that's what I do. Well, so why don't you give us a tour of the uh, property here? If you're interested in buying, absolutely. Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, sure. So, Peter just kind of motions for you all to kind of start walking forward. Absolutely. Just go this way! Like, towards the center of the place, if you will. So, so what features are here on this land? Well, it's a nice, awesome little area. It is a small plot, obviously, since it's the countryside, but that means much more privacy. You don't have any pesky neighbors around or anything like that. Although, um, you know... There is one thing about this place. Just one. How's the water? Oh, the water is perfectly fine. It turns out Middleton City's water system goes all the way out here. You don't have to worry about it at all. However, there's one little thing. As he says, as he's standing behind all of you, you're all closer to the center of this place. And what you guys see 
popping up from the ground is a very large, and I mean this because basically the whole ground starts moving as what you thought was grass actually turns out to be, and if I could actually get this to change layers, that'd be great. There you go. This thing. Shin Pokemon? Sort of. I mean, it kind of looks like we're fighting something out of a Pikmin franchise. Well, so it it looks up, it smiles, and opens its maw, maw kind of wide, and it looks like he wants to eat you guys. But before you guys can do anything, Marble walks like kind of walks up and says, "Hey, I know what that, <clears throat> I know what that is." You want to tell the rest of us? Oh, it's... Well... Hard to explain it exactly, but... Take it akin to, like, a dog that's not trained, or some kind of wild animal that's... You know, not really, like... A, not really, like, domesticated, but not really insanely wild. That's just sick. So it's you. So it's you. Got it. No. It's not really sentient. So it's you, got it. Do you know what that word means, son? Whatever. Anyway. Yeah, at least it's not an otter. Yeah, otters are weird. You ever met one? Let me tell you. But, um... No. This thing isn't gonna do anything without, like, something being laid directly in front of it. Marble, you're directly in front of it. Well, Marble is, but he kind of reaches up and pats the guy on, on the... Ch on the Since this thing's large, it kind of, like, rubs the bottom of this thing's chin. And it just kind of smiles and burrs gently. At this point, Harrison's going to spin around to a... Uh, Irish douchebag. Uh, before you can do that, actually... I have to make a roll. One second. While you're making that roll, um, Travis just takes a quick drink of something that he pulled out of his fanny pack. And yes, part of the uh, accoutrement to his uh, spandex outfit is a fanny pack. Nice. Because why wouldn't it be? Exactly. Because Travis. That is gonna. Yeah, alright. So, what you guys see is Harrison, when you turn around, the comic panel immediately shows Peter with a giant glowing fireball in his hand that he whips directly at Marble. And it slams into him pretty hard. Um, oh, shoot. I didn't stat him out properly. Whoops. As the fireball flies past Evers, he turns around and says, Yeah, I wanted to punch you in the face, but, uh... Now I've been wanting to do that to Marvel for a while. I, I'm perfectly... Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that, honestly. Uh-oh. No. He just kind of, like, looks at uh, Marvel and kind of just... Got a smirk on his face, like he's kind of amused. Uh, yeah, well, he should be very amused, considering, um... Marvel is now, cur now just got smashed in the face so hard, he's unconscious. <laughs> you know something uh, I, I didn't really like how you started this conversation sir but after that you're okay in my book yeah but here's the problem I was woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning by the guy he just knocked out if I wasted all this time just to watch Marvel get knocked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Schedule, whatever. 
It was worth it. But, I mean... At, at this point, Travis glances over, and I don't know if you need a perception roll for this, but he's looking to see if that fire thing that hit Marble is still there. Uh, it's a fireball, so it's smoldering. You know, there's there's a little bit here and there, but not, like, it's... Oops. It's not like the fireball itself is still there, but, you know, there's there's some remnants. Okay, well, all those remnants are flying right back. And, of course, I roll a one. <laughs> yeah, that's... But, okay, so roll your attack, though. I'll let you take it. Oh, that's why I hit initiative. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, jeez, yeah, you hit him. Actually, so, here's the thing. I'm going to actually need you to re-roll that once. Oh, well, there you go. You were saying. Yeah, that's one. All right, so he's going to take that, and then, so we got him. where's my sheet at? Now, when you're doing your saving check, take mm -hmm. a minus five to that because Travis is still kind of incoherent. So take it a... should be a DC 20? Yeah, oh, DC okay. 20 on that. I was trying to say, I'm like, we need to take a negative five to my roll. Like, okay, I see what you're saying. All right, um, hold on. I got to make sure I actually stat at this right because I don't think that's right. It is right. Okay. But is it left? That's the wrong character <laughs> marble would be extra dead yeah or did i throw marble no yeah no. yes you threw marble <laughs> no you didn't throw marble at least i don't think you would <laughs> come on oops <laughs> i mean kinetic marbles are a thing indeed okay there we go so you feel so what happens is that you take the smoldering you throw it towards towards Pete, uh, you feel something weirdly trying to affect you, but it doesn't. But still, that little hesitation and your sleepiness has allowed Peter to dip dodge out of the way, and it is time to roll initiatives. Okay, you can take my 18 as my initiative now. Right. Probably bring that up. So, guys have some good initiatives, let me tell you. I use my uh, one good roll today. Well, Peter, however, is going to use his assigned villain point because he gets these initiative. Because he's always been told by his mama to seize the day. So he's seizing initiative. So he's going to he's going to look at you and say, "Ah, I see. He did tell me that you were going to be quite the interesting people." I assume you've come for your friend. You use that term very loosely, sir. So, without saying much of anything else, he's going to run right up to towards the closest thing he's got to Harrison. Now, he's carrying a briefcase, which he's going to use to try to hit you, because that's what he does. He's got a briefcase. And a move I like to call by the way, briefcase By the way, I'm down. not on turn order. Oh. Yeah, I don't see Jin or uh, Travis on the turn order. You are. How does that... Okay. They are missing. 
They're not, though. It's right here. Well, they're not missing for yours. They're missing for ours. How does that... How am I not... Okay, hold on. How do I do that, then? Like, I don't know how to make that show up. Does that help? Does that give you something? Like I see it. I don't know. I, I was just saying, I I see it. It's on my. If you look at the stream, it's there. I don't know why I can't show it. You guys can't see it on yours. Oh well, as long as you know oh, when it's our turn, that's all that matters. Wait, no. Okay, you know what? It's on my thing. It's not on yours. So why why is that not doing that? That makes no sense. Oh, you know what? I oh. don't see it on the uh, stream either. Oh, you know what? I know why. I know why. Because it's pulling from your other tokens. Yeah, like the tokens from another map. Oops. Oh, because our tokens weren't on here. Right. Got it. Because I just put new ones on here. There we go. Anyway, Harrison. 24 hits your, um... Unfortunately, yes. Alright. DC 25 toughness as he smacks you upside the head with your... with his briefcase. Ow. Ouch. I'm gonna re-roll that with my hero. Alright. That would be a jet dead net 25, though, because it's less than a 10. Ouch. So, 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 no, that's good. so good. So it's good. Yes. Yeah. So he comes up, smacks Harrison with the briefcase. Harrison just sort of looks. You do realize how many times I've been hit with backpacks full of books. Do you really think your leather briefcase is going to hurt? I. <clears throat> I can't say I ever really cared about you, son. Anyway, Jin's up. So Jin is going to be uh, looking a little bit uninterested at this point. He's going to be looking around at the uh, area to see exactly what's going on. Uh, I'm going to do a perception check to see if I notice anything else in the area other than uh, Peter here. Cause that's it's... there's no one of the night. There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you notice right. that the ground. Well, if you're has playing, grass. The, if you're playing the game at home, Dark World of One, y'all know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you notice the ground has grass on it. Thanks, OPT. No problem. But that's so bad because not all of it does. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, if you remember his grass at home, that would actually enrage Jin. Yeah. Therefore, he would get angry. Therefore, he can use his abilities. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Even better. Okay, what are you attacking? I am attacking the uh, big plant dude. Oh, yeah, you hit him. Um, you hit him. I didn't actually... Hold on. What's that against? For, uh, toughness? Uh, toughness, yes. Tough, okay, yeah, that's not Peter. <laughs> um, let's just DM this thing. Uh, yeah, so you, you give him a bruise and a daze as it screams out in pain. By the way, everybody else give me a perception check. Okay, uh, Everest and Harrison noticed this. Um, dark. Dark. Keep my dice alone. No. <laughs> uh, the giant plant monster doesn't really seem like it's doing much of anything. Except, like, kind of um, hovering over marble. So. 
Uh, Harrison, it's on you. So, let me ask you a question. Why the aggressive stance? We complimented you on the fact that you roasted that obnoxious little pain in the ass. And then you have to come and swing at me with a briefcase? Peter just smirks. You have no idea what's going on, do you, kid? No, what I know is the fact that you look like a douche, you, you, you smell like a douche, you, you sound like a douche, uh, so therefore you must be a douche. So, yeah, I know exactly what's going on. I'm stabbing you. And he just whips up both daggers out of his, out of his boots and just slashes at All right. I think a 33 is going to hit his uh, parry. Yeah, um, yeah, that's... By how many tiers? Um, so many? It's a lot. It, it's... Okay, in that case, I'll get the plus five bonus for multi-attack. He needs to make a DC 25. Uh, actually, what he's going to do instead is force you to re-roll. As I said, <laughs> make a DC 25 tough to say. It's one How's less. How's rolling thing going for you? Apparently, my luck is not that well. So I just imagine, like, him trying... Oh! Well. Okay, then. I had so to... I just imagine, like... <laughs> yeah, him trying to go stab, and, like, he does this sort of weird luck thing, so it swings over his head, and Harrison just sort of throws the dagger up back behind him and grabs it a second time and gets him with it. It's pretty close, yeah. It was 25, right? It was 25, yes, sir. Jeez. Okay, then. I... I... Alright! Well, yeah, his toughness is 5, so... Yeah. <laughs> that had to be that. And that had to only be that. So basically what you're saying is if any of us hit him, he's kind of cooked. Probably! Alright, so that makes it... Travis's turn. Travis looks over at um, Harrison, says, from above next time, and he holds his turn. Okay, then. Everest! You, you, sir, have the right to remain silent. I am never silent! That doesn't sell things. By the way, y'all kind of hear marble stirring a bit. Because the big giant thing has kind of reached out and given him a big old puppy lick. Because marble is nice to him. Also, I'm muting him, so you might roll against that. Hmm. I'm, I'm using mute against him. Okay. He's right to remain silent. Oh, I see what you're saying. What's that do? <laughs> Mutes him. Okay. He's unable to speak. What's his, um, what's that against? Uh, will. Will. Oh, his will, huh? Okay. So as he said, he's never silent. That doesn't yeah, sell. Yeah, never silent. Yeah, didn't work. I'm actually gonna put. Come on, game. There we go. Oops, too many, too many marbles. Put marbles token on the board there. All right, so it's Peter's turn. Peter. Peter's gonna is gonna sit there and say, "You know what? Exactly. I never stop talking." So he is going to, I gotta see if I gave this anything, hold on a second. Nope, alright. So he's gonna look at you, Harrison, and he's going to use Annoying Shout! That is not a DC 10, by the way. 
Actually, it might be. It's pretty low DC, I think. No, it's a DC 23 against your... Um... Fortitude. So you forgot to punch it in. Yeah, so. if I didn't put it in right, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's a rank... So it's a rank 13? Yep. Okay. God, you and your math skills. Well... Afflictions are plus 10. Yeah. I, damage is plus 15. I, I, I know. <laughs> that one wasn't that hard. I know, I know, I know. Okay, nope. Uh, I, I have to check my immunities really quickly. Doesn't qualify under any of Oh. Nice. Aging and critical hits. <laughs> oh, Dang, you're immune to aging? Uh, it's one of the... Uh, I'll message you later with that. But yeah, I'm Harrison I'm, is a little uh, impaired as a... Ow. Right. I was making I was making a joke about being immune to aging. Anyway, um, yeah. You're impaired. Um, actually, TG, uh, go ahead and re-roll that with uh, my luck point. Actually, No! He's going to negate the use of your luck with one of his remaining luck points. I'll see your luck point and raise you a luck point. <laughs> and he said she's so lucky. She's a star. <laughs> so am I rolling off of Everest's luck point now? I, I, what, were you, Everest, were you being serious about that, Everest, or what? Do I have a luck point? I don't think so. No, that would be. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, <laughs> that's, that's, a, uh, that's a specific I skill. Yeah. I didn't actually know Hold you on. could counter luck points with luck. There is otherwise luck. I would have done that. No. Well, no, no, no. You can't counter with luck points, but there's an ability called luck control where you can use your luck points to to negate it. It's an actual physical ability. It's an actual ability. Well, I, I am checking something real quick. No problem. But I have to open here on my I'm also running out of uses of all of his luck ability, so... <laughs> yeah, luck control is actually something Chet has, too. Oh! I do have luck as an instant counter. That's an right, instant. but that's for you, not for me. That's for me. Yeah. Okay, fine. You're on your own. I mean, it's oh, it's impaired. I'm 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 now hearing things at minus two, so I got a minus two to all hearing checks. I'm assuming. Yeah. It was like, ah, dude, ow! Like that's right in my ear. Like there's no need to shout. Ow! Well, it's your turn. No, it's just turn. By the way, at this point, Marble is. Semi conscious. Um, actually, Travis, Jin, and Everest gave me a perception check. And, um, Harrison, you can too, but you've got your. This, this is to hear something, oddly enough, so. Nope. Yeah. Um, okay, Jin and Travis definitely are gonna hear this. Um, I didn't. Nor roll a. Okay, Nora's clues. You hear Marble kind of whisper, Wait, that's not... That's... That's not luck. Travis really doesn't care right now, so... Oh, that's fine. I'm just saying, you hear that. Anyway, it's Jin's turn. So although Jin is still annoyed at the overgrown grass that he dislikes so much, uh, he's going to uh, shift his focus to uh, Peter, since he doesn't see any uh, hostility coming from it. And he is going to uh, use my electricity move one more time. Alright, that is definitely going to hit. Uh -huh. Is that's toughness, right? 
Yes. All right. Okay. How? How have you done that twice in a row now? I don't, I don't know. know. It's like it's like you've never seen that before with a GM, right? I don't normally roll back to back crits. I normally just roll 18, 19, 20, and 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 20. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so so your lightning just kind of like slams slams into his briefcase, I guess. Harrison? And Travis, who's holding his action. Oh, that's right. Okay, so Travis just looks over at Harrison, and all of a sudden, like, ten boulders start rising boulders. up from the ground and make sort of like a staircase to above where uh, Peter... And Harrison, knowing exactly what uh, Travis is planning, is going to parkour all the way up the boulders and then dive down straight on top of Peter with the daggers. Okay. Notes on moving stuff. Nice. Okay. That's stupidly creative, so I'm going to give you both a hero point for creating that, because that's awesome. Uh, 28. How many does that hit his uh, his parry by? Let me see. I think his parry is 14. As in, like, that's, like, it's 4. Right, so, four. so <laughs> that is... 6. I'm sorry, it's 6. So it's not. It's only two tiers. Two tiers. So instead of a DC 25, it's a DC 22. As a death... Hold on a second. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> I just had to make sure. I'm glad you did. So he's still injured, right? Because <laughs> it was 20... What? 22. 22. Never mind. I'm just imagining like him blocking the lightning with the with the briefcase and putting it up, and the dagger's just slamming in right. the briefcase. This is ridiculous. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. All those boulders. Those boulders come crashing down. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Nice. Is there? Oh, kinetic bullet. Okay. I don't think yeah. a thirteen hits him. No, no, probably not. Uh, it's his parry, right? That's dodge. 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 Right. Uh, actually, yeah, his dodge is a seven. I mean, you do have two sexy hero points and luck points. Yes, you do. I'll use the hero point. <laughs> I think no, the gate lock only works on things that, like, I don't know, him. Uh, in order to negate the hero point, he would have had to have used luck control to spend his villain point. Yeah. But since he's already spent it, he cannot. Correct. Yeah, I can't counter that. All right, so all right, so that hits, like, massively. Okay, so... I'm throwing stuff. <laughs> okay, just, just, can we, can we just... Also, stabby, stabby. Then... Okay, there we go. So these bo so okay so here's the here's the scene here's the scene the lightning strikes down slams directly into his briefcase which shockingly doesn't burst into flames from this at the same time that happens he s basically swipes ha um, Harrison's like dagger away as he's dropping down with it but as that happens all of these boulders from the sky just slam downwards and crush him. Like, you see, like, one scene of him, like, looking, like, he knocks the dagger away. He looks as douchey as absolutely possible. Finger guns and everything. And then, next comic panel is just crush. And then boulders.
And that's all you see. But what you see afterwards... Well, actually, after that, what you hear is someone say, Ah, nuts! By the way, we're not in initiative anymore. As what you see after that is this thing pop out. Right. There's two of them. Shut that off. Well, why did you Marvel. go and why did you go and do that for? Marble. Marble looks kind of like why? Eh. There's another one of you. Oh, of course, that had your puppy alone and come take care of this. He looks well. Remember, he's practically unconscious, but uh, who's there? Ah, Marble. <laughs> I guess you're not having a good time, are you? Noticing that he's not moving, Travis goes and grabs Marble by the foot and drags him over. Well, he, as I said, he's like unconscious. He got hit by a fireball and smashed. Yes, so I grab him by the foot and just drag right. him over. Also, I just moved Harrison to, to where he would have been after jumping up the rocks. That's fine. He's like... Fells? The little feline demon smirks. It's like, yeah, it's me. Yeah, bum. Okay. All of a sudden, a rock is hanging above this thing. He steps away. Look, look, look. Stop. Everybody, stop. It's 3.30 in the morning. I've been woken up already by that thing, points to marble. And now I'm looking at you, and you look remarkably like that thing, but you're another thing. What the hell thing are you? Why the hell are you here thing? And where the hell is our skunk? Oh, Chet! Yeah, he's in the building back there. So why are we awake at 3.30 in the morning? I don't know. Ask the one who woke you up. He's the one that got all panicky because he couldn't find his pack mortal. Okay, so why did you steal his pack mortal? I like messing with it. I have a rock that wants to mess with you right now. Oh, do ya? Is he standing on the ground right in front of Harrison? Uh, I guess pretty close to it, yeah. Harris is just going to punt him. He's going to actually jump out of the way. Because he's really quick. Basically has the reflexes of a feline. Shockingly, he's a feline demon. Ish. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Not so fast there, bro. I got no beef with you. I just messed with my good pal over there. Draw. He's still looking for this. And he pulls a coin out. He pulls a coin out, and it's definitely not a currency coin from, like, America or anything like that. Um, it's got a blue tint to it as he flips it, like, you know, in his hand repeatedly. And uh, Marble looks up and gasps. He's, he's flipping it in his hand? A little bit, yeah. Marble looks up and is like, That's... <sighs> Give that back! You jerk! That roll was, uh... Travis's attempt to, uh, snag it out of the air. Well, was considering what it is, it's not actually going to be possible. Because it's... A luck demon's lucky coin, which is currently in the control of Velv. So, luckily, it doesn't go to you. Oh, I wasn't trying to get it to move to me. Right, yeah. 
He was just trying to get this. Well, Harrison doesn't know this, so right. um, I'm going to need him to. Ma- I'm going to need the demon to make a perception check at DC 23. Uh, one second. I had. I didn't put a sheet on here, but I actually did stat him. I do love skill masteries. Yeah, right. Hey, Dark, skill mastery is an advantage that gives you take a 10 automatically. All right. Thanks, (laughs) Teach. So he doesn't see this happening. Hold on. He's got one use of luck roll left. Well, he he just doesn't see Harrison sneaking up on the boulder. That's all. Oh, that's fine. I'm not going after the coin yet. Yeah. He just doesn't see Harrison up on the boulder. Well, he's not sticking around much longer, but yeah. Just, he just smirks and says, You might want to help your friend, by the way. We didn't really leave him in a... good sorts, if you know what I mean. So, at this point, Harrison's you... waiting for... Oh, go ahead, Travis. By the way, anybody want to check on, you know, Peter McLiley? And we lost him. What? Again. Yep. Does that mean we get to do whatever we want? I mean, I don't see why not. I would leave your shirt on just in case he comes back online. Even if he doesn't come back online, leave your shirt on. See, I'll just turn the camera off. Well, you can do that anyway. Funniest thing is I can still hear them. There we go. Bafferty. Oh, hey. Hey, there's movement. I see an OPT. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on tonight. I've not had these kind of problems for a while. It's okay. We were just playing smooth jazz. No problem. So where did I... I'm making wire jokes. Yeah, where did I... I heard you guys up until, like, literally five seconds ago. Where did I leave off? We didn't hear a thing thing you said. You basically said something about our friend. Oh. Not being left in the best situation. Right. Yeah, so Valve turns up and says, Yeah, your friend's not really left in a good situation. You probably want to go get him before he bleeds out. Also, does anybody want to check on Lightly? No. Not really. Um, um, Jin being the curious sort will walk over and uh, investigate. Uh, he's dead. Can uh, I investigate the body and see if he had anything on him? Oh, absolutely. The briefcase, which is crushed. <laughs> it is, actually. No, he's dead, and it's not from the boulders. So, uh, on top of this boulder, Harrison's waiting for the uh, demon, the cat demon thing, to sort of flip the coin and play with it again. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I'm going to need another, uh, in this case, because he doesn't know he's there, um, it would have to be a dexterity check to versus Harrison's sleight of hand to grab the coin. Which is also 23 due to skill mastery. And honestly, this has nothing to do with it being a luck demon's lucky coin. It's to do with the fact that it's a coin, it looks rare, Harrison's trying to sell it. (laughs) 
So you said dexterity, just my blanket dexterity. Well, yeah, it would be a dexterity check or or a uh, or an acrobatic. Well, I wouldn't say acrobatics; you wouldn't be prepared for it. To be resistant to either a dexterity or a opposed sleight of hand. Yeah, I don't have a post sleight of hand. Sleight of hand, not post sleight of hand. Unless you meant just sleight of hand. Right, all right. You would roll his sleight of hand versus mine, the post sleight of hand roll. Oh. Yeah, he's a sneaky little guy. Oops, that's the wrong window. <laughs> I do have the advantage if he doesn't know I'm there. No, I agree. That's why it's plus 23, right? Or, not plus 23. Oh, it was 23 because of the skill mastery. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, uh... Sweet! As Harrison just dumps down and grabs the coin. Okay, that is going to invoke his luck once more. The only luck he's got left. Because, by the way, in case you haven't noticed, Peter didn't have luck. Valve's got the luck. It's not the luck demon thing. Never mind, you got it. Roll. Hey! Oh. He's just gonna run after you. Yeah. Uh, he immediately jumps at you, claws up and everything. Marble, I believe this belongs to you. You want to get this thing off me? And he's just sort of running. Switches the coin to his right hand and then turns around and just unleashes a blast at this guy. I don't think that's going to hit him, though. It actually isn't, yeah. So, do you flip Do you flip it to him, or what? No, nope, he still... Uh, Harrison still has the coin, because Marble hasn't responded. Marble's like... Marble's like crawling across the ground at this point towards you. It's like, oh my gosh. You got it. Oh, thank you so much. I, um, any of you other three want to stop this thing from calling at me? Harrison yeah, goes over, or not Harrison, Travis goes over to Harrison and sort of pries his uh, kinetic sword in between and sort of just plucks the feline off. <laughs> You're peeling the cat off the scratching post. <laughs> So he's going to make one grab attempt at that coin as he's getting pulled off, but I don't think he's going to make it. I don't even think that would be sleight of hand at this point. That would be something else. Of course, his grab is not going to be all that great, because he's not really a strong character. What is his grab, anyway? <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be a joke, but never mind. Wow. Yeah, I'm not even going to roll. No, I wouldn't. That. I wouldn't. No, don't even. It's a one. He fails anyway. Yeah, he's just like sort of grasping at the hand. And mm -hmm. just like, no, no, he goes wait. to jump. He goes to jump for it and trips over the sword. The sword. <laughs> <laughs> he's not lucky anymore. It's not like he's not lucky anymore. But... <laughs> Hold on, would that be the appropriate time for Travis to look down and, like, sarcastically say, your locks ran out? Exactly! But he looks up at you and says, Hasn't quite run out yet. We'll see each other again. And with that, Marble, or not Marble, uh, Valve kind of stands up, takes another coin out of his pocket, this one is a much more gray coin. He gives it a quick flip, catches it, and disappears. Again, a little puff of smoke. At this point, Harrison unclutches the, his right hand and is now looking at the coin in his hand. So, the coin... Hard to explain, but the coin itself looks otherworldly. Um, it's... 
about the size of a silver of a half dollar. That makes any sense? Yep. Does everyone remember what those are? Okay. Um, it, it's about that size, although the markings on it are more runic in nature than they are, like, you know, design. But obviously, there's in your head, there's nothing that this looks like. And, in fact, the, the dragoness in your head even says something along the lines of, that, that's just a design. That's not, that doesn't even say anything. <coughs> So Marble, who's also staggering as as, over towards you. As soon as you disappeared, Travis started in a dead sprint towards the building. Oh, yes, good. All right, so Marble kind of staggers over towards Harrison. It's like, can I... Can I have that back? Right now, no. I'm still mad at you. And he starts taking off towards the building as well. As you take off towards the building, he kind of, like, latches on to you. More so, so you can carry him over because he can't barely move. He's basically riding your shoulders. But don't worry, he doesn't really weigh much of anything, so you barely notice. Should probably close the picture of Elf. All right, so inside this building is shed. Basically, uh, you guys. It's locked when you get there, but um, I suppose somebody can tell me how they get the lock off of the wooden door. Uh, I don't get the lock off the wooden door. A rock, a big boulder goes through the wooden door. It lands directly on Chet and Set. No. <laughs> so, no, you um, go inside. It's a walk-in shed, basically. Like, it's a, it's a larger shed. Um, it has... Or at least would have, like, up to two or maybe even three riding lawnmowers inside of it. Uh, this one has um, a mattress and an unconscious skunk who is clearly bleeding onto said mattress. Uh, and looks very much so like he is not going to go much longer without immediate medical attention. Well, I'm using one of my uh, luck points. Okay, that's actually a 20. That's fine. Uh, yes, you stabilize him. So, through your work and whatnot, you realize he's probably slightly concussed. He's definitely bruised all over. Um, you're able to, as I said, stabilize him for the time being, which is um, really nice. So, uh, yeah, good job. Everest is going to come in and being a magic police officer. We're going to attack on a cure. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, so the bleeding is stopping now from different horses. By the way, um, Everest, uh, give me an insight check real quick. I don't want to. Please? Can I intimidate you instead? No. Okay. So you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. So um, when you noticed that um, Pete was dead, and as I said, it wasn't from the boulders, you were able to now surmise one thing. Uh, he died from whatever Velve did to him, which means you could have tried to arrest him at that point. I should have arrested the Oh, well. Next time. I wasn't in the mood. Next time, yeah. Next time I'll get him. Indeed. I'll just, uh... How am I going to fill out my report? Eris is just writing the notes now and, and filling out the notes to, to submit the report. There's your pack mortal. Now get off my shoulder. Uh, he does. So, of course, as he slips down, he grabs the coin from your hand. Uh, it's still grasped firmly in his fists. It's his coin. He's grabbing at it. Like, can I have my oh, coin no, no, back? I, he, he, look. Can I have my coin back, please? You woke all of us up at stupid o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that was right. You're Chet not, was in trouble. You're not getting this back until you explain to me what the actual hell it 
does. It's our luck coin. Every luck demon has a lucky coin. Valve stole mine. When did he steal your coin? It's been a while. He's kind of been a bully to me for most of my existence. So, what you're saying is this, because you didn't have this, this is the reason why neither you nor Chet could actually win anything at the table. Uh, it's probably a good, good reason, at least one of them. Marvel slicks down to the mattress and kind of, he's still, still hurting a lot, so he kind of, uh, slicks down and, um, lays kind of next to Chet kind of, like, making sure he's okay. No, that, that's... It's, it's, it's a tool that luck demons use, but more specifically, it's also, you know, it's kind of a part of us. It's, it'd be like if someone stole something, like, really important to you. That's maybe it did stuff, maybe it didn't, but it's like your family crest, if you will. Though I don't really have a family, but still. And if it's something this important, why would you let somebody take it from you? I didn't let him take it from me. He stole it from me. And maybe you should keep a better eye on your things. Because he stole something from you. I'm very capable of stealing something from you. Oh, I watched you steal from... Well, never mind. Well, yes. I said from you, not from him. Well, of course you're capable of stealing from me. I don't have much on me. As he says this, this is just more for effect. The coin that he had that he flipped, Harrison produces that in his other hand. Nope. I'm not going to ask you why you decided to get that because of where that was. I mean, if you'll notice, it's not like I'm wearing clothing. As I said, you flips that first coin back to him. I'm very capable of getting it. You really do need to keep a better eye on your things. And as he says that, he looks at the coin in his hand and Chet. Yeah. Guys, I think we got to get into a hospital, though. So, uh, Everest, how's that poor old apartment working? What was that, huh? I said, how is your portal department working? Oh, I'm sure they're not, but do I need to ring them up? I was just taking notes about the, the scene here. Yeah, we probably all want to go home and go back to bed. Oh, I need to get... It's like 7 in the morning now. We need to get... Like, yeah, it's like four or five, actually. Oh, well, whatever. But well, we need to get Chet thing. to a hospital we, first. Well, we well, take separate hospitals. Yeah, hold on. Hold on one second. Yeah, we, we, we need a uh, um, a portal team here. We, we need one, two, three, four, six portal. Seven. Uh, Seven. Bob says, uh... Yeah, I'm the only one up right now, so y'all gonna have to go to one place, and then I can go get you from there. Harrison's gonna try something. He's gonna flip the lock coin in his hand, grasp it, and see if it works. Nothing happens. Marble. Yeah. If I give this to you, can you make it so that guy on the other end of the phone can get us all home right now? Probably not, but I can make sure he gets us to the right place. I did it last time. I'm gonna speak to the dragon in his head. Is there any possible way that this magic on my hand can help me fly home? She says, It's a demonic coin, dear. No. Unless you I want to become to a, unless you want to become a demon. No, no, like, I don't care about the coin. I meant the magic in my hand. 
Oh, sorry. I thought you back up a second. No. Yeah. Uh, no, dear. It's 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 not used for transport. I'm sorry. And I can't carry you because I'm not exactly corporeal either. Then get out here and become corporeal. I, I'm not corporeal when I'm out there. It's just only you can see me or hear me. Except apparently that demon can hear me too, which is weird. Then we'll take the one-stop shopping. We'll go and we'll just keep dropping everybody off. I just want to go. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll start at the hospital and you'll be first. <clears throat> right. Maybe. All right. So, portal opens. You portal off to the general hospital. And that is where we're going to leave this part one of this event for now. Thank you guys all for playing. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Because um, that was a very interesting session. I actually had a lot of fun with that. Um, but for everybody here... By the way, two PowerPoints, you guys. But that's obvious. But for everybody here, Nora, Dark, myself, TG, Krim, I'm OPT Lawyer. Join us! I believe next week we're getting back to Bay City, assuming everybody else can be here. The next yes, time... Next Yes. This week, we do have some Bay City, and ladies and gentlemen, it's totally not a space license. All right. However, the next uh, time we come to Middleton City, we will be at issue six, part two of this event called Unlucky Break, Silent Hospital. Until then, have a wonderful evening. Goodbye, all. <laughs>